Badger and the Badger. Hey everyone, it is the Angry Honey Badger here, and it is time for us to take a look at another champion build video. Today we will be playing as Sona in the bot lane as support, because that is her role. And that's what we're going to do. So what we're going to do in the video is talk about her runes and her masteries, her abilities, and of course her items that you're going to be wanting to build when you play as Sona. So kicking off this video, we will start out by talking about her abilities so we know what's happening as the game goes on. So kicking things off with her power cord. After you cast three abilities, after three ability casts, your next standard attack will deal bonus magic damage with an additional effect on it depending on what it, uh, the cast was of your last ability. And we will talk about those after this fight. Elise is coming through lane for the gank. I was originally getting focused, but Bonus stuck around to pick up the kill because Blitzkank was getting low from it. Now I'm going to try to block out a little bit and help heal him and uh, kind of just play a little defense, a little back and forth. I took the abuse, he picked the kill, and then he took the abuse, and then I came back to help heal him up and uh, take care of him after securing the kill. So that's what we did right there, but back to that passive. Now, those bonus effects that you get depend on that last ability you cast so for your Q the bonus effect would be additional damage on the heal which is your W which we'll, we'll cover more in depth I'm just gonna go over what the or, or what the, they do for the power cord um, on that one what happens is that spell will reduce the targets damage by 20% and I believe it scales a little um, for the next three seconds and then if your last ability cast was your E which is your movement speed buff um, what will happen there is if you hit someone with that on your power cord because that was your last cast that will slow the enemy So those are what it does with your power cord now Let's go ahead and move on into the rest of those abilities and talk about them more in depth now Your Q ability is what you're gonna put a point in at level one typically you'll max this out first because of its damage output Capabilities uh, allowing you to poke and zone and lane what you do here What it does is when you activate it. It's gonna send out a couple bolts. It's gonna hit enemies It's gonna deal magic damage um, it's going to prioritize champions over minions, but if they're not in range, it will hit minions. So you got to be careful about not stealing farm with it. And then the aura of that is uh, allied champions that are targeted with him of Valor's aura will deal additional damage. Um, simply put. Um, got into a tiny fight there. Nothing huge. Just a fight. We won, which is good. Next at level 2, put a point to your W ability, which is your Perseverance. Now your Perseverance is your heal. Sona heals herself and a nearby ally champion. Very helpful. It scales. Quite nice. You can read more in depth into it. Sona and her allied champions that are targeted with the aura of Perseverance are then also shielded, which is very nice. The shield is great. They're shielded for 1.5 seconds. And we already talked about what its, uh, its power cord plus is which was that the uh, enemy is hit by it will be dealing less damage, which is awesome. And then your uh, Song Clarity is your E ability. You're going to max this out last, put a point to it at level 3. What happens here is you are going to speed up all allied champions that get the buff from it for 3 seconds. It does decay over time. Allied champions in the aura of uh, Song of Clarity will gain movement speed for one and a half seconds. Also pretty nice. So, ooh, yeah, what was I gonna say? We just killed Bane. And we find Elise. And she's gonna actually dodge out on the crescendo right as I go to do it, which was pretty smart, but she's gonna die anyways. So, um, yeah, pretty simple. And then finally, your ultimate, that is your crescendo. Um, each rank, of crescendo improves your aura bonuses, which is also very nice. And then when you activate it, Sona plays the, her ultimate chord, forcing enemies to dance, which counts as a 1.5 second stun, also dealing magic damage to them. And that is your crescendo. Very, very, very good ultimate when used correctly, or when you get everybody in it. Very helpful. So those are your abilities with Sona. And uh, here we're gonna have bonus move into lane invisibly. She knows something's up though. We're gonna try to get him touched with that uh, movement speed pass. We can get back up here quick. Then we'll switch over to our Q, which is gonna help us deal damage to her and help him with the uh, with the aura of damage, which is helpful. So that is uh, just things to think about in the lane. You know, getting your auras correct um, is more beneficial to you when it actually comes to picking up kills. Um, if you do them wrong, 
you can still be really helpful as Sona, but getting your auras correct uh, is, is helpful. And I mean, you can really pick which one you think is best at the time. If the movement speed you think is going to benefit your team in a team fight, if you think that using your Him of Valor is going to be the most beneficial in a team fight, that is also very important. So um, you'll learn about those as you play Sona if you haven't played much Sona. But those, those are important. But there's a few other things that are more important that we will talk about um, as the game continues. So let's go ahead and talk about her uh, items a little bit. Since we have moved into the 17-minute moment of the game, um, we started off with the Frost Queen's Claim, building towards that. Very helpful item. It, the Pokin Lane it helps. It's more powerful. We do have that mana regeneration early. We do get the passive gold. Um, also, because you harass so much, you're going to be picking up plenty of gold from the harassment that you can get off of that. Here we did a nice crescendo, picking up three of them, which is helping us re-engage on this fight. This is picking up the kill on Blitzcrank while Elise is focused down by Twitch. And then I believe Azir, yeah, did pick up a kill, but we did end up finishing him off. But the good crescendo there at the start of that fight, hitting all three of them, was able to set that up so our team could position ourselves a little bit better um, since we were kind of getting caught in a little bit of an awkward uh, awkward placement at least. So the, the crescendo can really help your team re-engage or engage on a fight to either pick off someone immediately or kind of buy you that one and a half second time period to kind of reposition yourself, get ready, re-engage on a fight that maybe you weren't sure you could take right away, which is kind of what that one was. They were coming in and were really confident and that kind of helped slow them down, let us regain composure. So that's what we did there. Now back to those items. After we do stuff with our Frost Queen's Claim, obviously early on we're going to pick up a side stone. You are a support. You are a warding. You're doing all that. Obviously don't forget to pick up pink wards and place them around the map. Um, in various locations. Very helpful to do that as well, which we had a few doing that. I don't think we have any up right now. But um, also going to want that item. Now, I do build Boots of Mobility on my Sona. It's very helpful when you want to run in and engage a fight uh, with that crescendo. Make sure you are, you know, can get in there quick as long as you're not interrupted. And if you do this while you are doing your Song of Clarity, you're coming in at an even faster rate and it'll help your, just kind of line up the, the crescendo even easier. So it's very helpful, and I do like those boots. It's also very good for warding, and uh, you just don't get caught as often when you ward, because you're just way fast. You run up, throw that in your bush, get out, and hopefully you don't get caught at all. So I'm going to do that. Now this fight, we're a little spread out, and there's a lot of them all on top of each other. Um, I am going to be able to get, get off a great power cord, um, and but unfortunately it's right as Twitch dies, because he would have been able to hold them all down. Um, Ryze does pick up a kill through the wall, and I see Azir here with about 350 health. I have a power cord up, and I just use a Q, which, um, did I have a power cord up? I don't even know. I think I did. Did I? I'm pretty sure I did. So, um, we're able to pick up a kill. Now, picking up kills with Sona is very important. We're going to cover that in just a second as we continue building. Now, we did just finish off our next item, which is going to help us with mana regeneration and with saving lives, and that is the Mikhail's Crucible. Now, very helpful, it does give us tons of mana regeneration. And the mana regeneration allows you to use your spells quite often. Sona has very short cooldowns on all of her abilities. Here we're gonna actually crescendo Vein right as she comes out of her invisible, just to help save lives and uh, secure kills. Actually, we, we get the kill. Not a big deal. Save bonus content doing it. So, um, he probably would have died if I didn't use that stun on her. And then we actually pick up the double kill with a standard attack, not even a crescendo. Or, uh, not crescendo, sorry, not even with a power cord standard attack. But you will pick up kills with power cord, um, especially if your um, Hymn of Valor was your last ability cast, because that bonus damage on your power cord from that one really will kill people. It's a lot of damage. Sona can contribute an okay amount of damage. She does really get a lot off in lane, which helps secure, you know, good kills, but just it, you're going to get kills. It's going to happen. So we're going to actually buy an item that's going to help with that. But back to the, um, back to that Mikhail's. The low cooldowns on all of her abilities will allow you to spam way more often. So having lots of mana on hand is very helpful. The other great thing, obviously, about the Crucible is it's active, where it removes all stuns, roots, taunts, fears, slows, silences from allied champions. And it also does heal them which is, well, it's always nice to get healed, regardless. So, um, you're gonna really save your, the lives of your high priority uh, damage dealers on your team when you do that. So, that's what we did with that. Now, the next item we have figure, figured off, finished off, more like, is a Lich Bane. 
Now, at this point in the game, I wouldn't maybe rush a Lich Bane this quick unless you're gonna legitimately help carry, in which right now, we are kind of helping carry. It's mostly the bot lane doing most of the work right now. Um, so that is, uh, this is kind of the aggressive Sona. We pick up a kill on Azir because of Power Cord and because of Lich Bane and because of fun, mostly fun. So um, we're gonna see that come into effect. We're gonna do a lot of kills this game now because the Lich Bane on top of the just how often you can proc the passive of the Sheen in it because your abilities are on short cooldowns and then the, also the damage on top of it from the power cord, you will actually legitimately deal a lot, a lot of damage. And it's gonna be uh, just beneficial to everybody for you to deal that damage because Sona does a lot of damage. People don't, I mean, people have seen this in ARAM probably, people building straight AP Sona. She heals her allies for a lot and she ends up killing things because of the power cord passive with the proc of the Lich Bane. It's just very powerful. So we are gonna be building that this game. And that is what we have picked up. And then next, what we're gonna start to work on is uh, we picked up a little bit of magic resist, which their team actually has a handful of magic damage. Um, so this is good to prioritize, but this is also just good for the team. We're gonna be picking up the Aegis of Legion, which we just have now finished, and that will be building off into the Locket of the Iron Solari, granting even more auras and all of that fun stuff. We are an aura machine and a standard attack passive damage machine, which is super fun. You can probably almost solo certain people as a support this way. You're gonna be still very squishy, which then is a good transition over into Pros and cons for Sona. Let's talk about those. Very, very helpful to cover those. Now, first off, let's go over those pros because she's got good ones. She's got great poke in lane early on. That's a great one. Her auras are very fantastic for her team. Auras are always good. AoE, great thing. So the AoE auras are fantastic. You do also have an AoE stun ultimate. You can technically hit everybody on the enemy team and make them dance for one and a half seconds. It's pretty OP if you think about it, if you land it. And then, obviously, the heals and the speed ups. Obviously, it's part of the auras, but her kit's very good. Um, super low cooldown's also helpful. And uh, she scales quite well as the game continues just because of her kit. So, those are some of her just general pros about Sona. Now, a couple of her cons you want to think about is she generally has a little bit lower movement speed um, early on because they don't want to give her too much because her poke and all of her extra movement speed she can grant anyways would be overpowered. And you need to be careful about that. Um, you really don't want to mess up her ultimate. If you do, you're kind of, that's kind of sucky. Just to put it blatantly straightforward. It's very important to get that correct um, and utilizing its maximum um, stun capacity. So uh, practicing your ultimate and getting good with that, very helpful. Um, you also want to be able to use it without getting caught out. So that's kind of a double, it's kind of a double win. You want to get in there and use it effectively, but you don't want to either get caught out and die immediately or whiff it completely. And then, um, obviously, she's a really squishy support. Like, she will die pretty quick. So careful about that, that's just kind of general news. Um, if you, like I said, that Q early on, like I said, it will hit minions if you don't hit enemy champions. So you will push lanes, you gotta be careful about that, or steal farm, which if you don't know the ADC and they get angry about it, then you have an angry ADC, never helpful. And the other one too, which has to do with the um, picking up those minion kills, is the, the casting on her abilities besides her ultimate, is really non-specific, meaning you might use it, you might not get the target you want. Now, I believe her heal typically will just go who has the least amount of health on your team or percentage of health, um, so you gotta be a little bit careful there. But other than that, you know, it usually picks well, so you don't have to worry about it too much. But there, I mean, I just used the Hymn of Valor. It hit Baron and it hit Warwick. It didn't hit anyone else because no one else was close enough, but you know, there's no amazing indication of what it's really gonna go for. There we use the Crescendo actually just on, at least to make her dance as she tries to go in for the Baron steal. Although Baron had way too much life, now I'm trying to solo too, and that's not gonna work out, me soloing a Vayne and a Zier, let alone their Zier actually has kills. Um, so yeah, gonna die, but we will clean up most of this fight as I believe Vayne runs off into the night. So yeah, those are her abilities, that's kinda how that works. Now, moving back into the build, we are now starting to finish off one of our final items for the build. We're picking up a uh, Frozen Heart. Very helpful, the armor will be helpful on me as I do get focused down, but mostly the aura on that will be good and it'll give me more mana. Obviously there's a few other directions you could take things. If you didn't really wanna worry about that, you could like go Twin Shadows if you really wanted to. Or if you really wanna just get some damage, I mean I guess you could do a Death Cat, but 
like I said, the, the Lich Bane is really going to be enough. And at this point, we pretty much are full build. Um, the most unfortunate part about being full build is we can't have Pink Wards in our inventory because we're actually full items, but that's fine. Now we're going to jump into those Runes Masteries real quick. Um, as for those marks, I do the Hybrid Penetration, which are going to be great. We're going to do the Armor Seals. We're going to do the Magic Resist, the flat ones, I believe, for the Glyphs. And then I usually take, like, AP Quints. Um, that's pretty generic. There's some other options you can do as well. And then as for your mastery pages, I'll put two pictures up of them right now in the video. One of them is Support Classic, which has points in defense and then 21 in uh, utility. And the other one is Support Caster, which is a little bit more damage, no defense, and it's kind of more of an aggressive lane. And uh, that is going to be 10 in the offense and 20 in utility. So it helps you pick up a little bit more damage and it's pretty helpful. But that is going to be a build for Sona. Everything you need to know is down in the description, as always. And until I see you again, just have fun with Sona, and I'll see you next time. Yo, we're going to be playing as the freshly reworked Victor, who, in fact, did need a rework, so I'm very excited about this. So um, what we're going to do today in this video is we're going to go over everything you might want to know if you're looking to play some Victor now.